You know, we are currently in a moment of reckoning in our country. You know, with the killing of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and the recent shooting of Jacob Blake, and so many countless Black Americans who have lost their lives to police violence. You know, voting is not going to magically solve all of our nation's problems, but it's really the necessary action that we all must take to use our power. If people want to end the killing of Black Americans by the police, or fix our criminal justice system, or make sure we have better schools and education, we all have to vote. And remember, the elected officials work for us, the voters. Our democracy really isn't a crisis moment right now. Um, as you know, voters of color, people with disabilities, young people, students, and people with limited English proficiency have historically faced and continue to face barriers to the ballot box in 2020. Instead of tactics like literacy tests and poll taxes that were implemented in the past to prevent black and brown voters from casting their ballot, in recent years, we've seen modern day voter suppression tactics around the country, like strict voter ID laws, voter purges, and mass closures of polling places. And what we're seeing right now is that COVID-19 is just another barrier to the ballot that voters are facing. And voters of color are the most impacted by the virus and also by voter suppression. And the chaos at the primaries is a wake up call for our democracy. You know, on the day of primaries in states like Georgia and Wisconsin, some voters of color stood in lines for up to seven hours just to cast their ballot. And we cannot have a repeat of this in November. You know, policymakers and state officials must make changes now to protect and make sure voters can have safe and accessible elections in November.